that yet, and they're just inquiring. I do recognize, right, so I think, you know what, I think we'll get started, and as people come in, we will, uh, we will let them come through. Okay. So good evening, everyone. Uh, again, thank you so much for joining us. You'll realize that we're trying a bit of a different format this time. We're actually, we're showing you our faces just to help in, uh, encourage some interactivity. So as most of you are aware, this webinar is for those of you who are interested in running for council. So we are gonna provide a bit of an overview of what that entails and what it actually means to serve on council. Most of you probably are familiar with me. My name is Ryan Pistan and I'm the communications officer here at the college. And I'm joined by Lynn Kabaroff, who is a registered kinesiologist and she actually served on council from 2013 until 2016 and Lynn correct me if I'm wrong I guess I should know this because you were sort of my boss for a period of time uh, you were president for two terms yes all right she she was a little confused as well so she was president for two terms <laughs> so again thanks everyone for joining us if you have any questions feel free to type them into the uh, chat box and we will uh, we will take a bit of a break to answer some of your questions as we go along so first things first, if you are interested in running for council, you do have to know a bit about what council actually is. So in some of our communications, we often say that it is similar to a board of directors, but it's very different from a board of directors in that council's role is actually defined in legislation. And the two pieces of legislation that are very important to our profession and to all health profession, uh, health regulated health professions in Ontario, is the Regulated Health Professions Act of 1991. And that piece of legislation essentially says that every college will have a council and that that college is due is to protect the public. And then we've got the Kinesiology Act of 2007, which actually establishes the college as the regulator for the profession, but related back to the council actually tells us who needs to be on our, on our council. And again, while we are very similar, similar to a board of directors, it's extremely important to note that Council's role is defined in legislation, as I mentioned, but even more important, you as a body are accountable to the Ontario government for everything that you do. So the government can step in if it finds that something is going wrong. So that is one of the major differences. So a couple of points about what council actually does. Council is responsible for setting the college's overall strategic direction, and it develops and, uh, and approves the policies, bylaws, and standards that basically guide the organization. So I've mentioned it a couple of times now that the college and council exist to protect the public, and that is basically your entire job as a board. As a board. And so on council, there are 10 kinesiologists who are elected by their peers and eight members who are appointed by the Ontario government. And you may be wondering why we do have members who are appointed by the Ontario government. Kind of to tie it back to that legislative piece when it says that the college's role is to protect the public. So because kinesiology is a self-regulated profession, what that essentially means is that it is a contract between the college and the government. And in exchange for the privilege of self-regulation, that essentially means that everything that you do needs to be in the public's interest. And so it's important to have that mix of professional members and public members to really make sure that the public's perspective is represented on council. And so our council has a mix of six to eight, and currently we have eight public members. And so a bit of background about your duties as a council member. So what actually happens when you are elected to this board? So first things first, while you are elected by kinesiologists, remember that you don't represent them and that you do not have a constituency base. Once you get to council, your first and foremost duty is to make sure that everything that you're doing is in the public interest. And so again, tying it back, all decisions are made with that public protection and that public lens. And a couple of important things to note, when you are on council, you cannot advocate for or promote the profession. This sometimes tends to happen. A lot of people will get really excited when they run and they say, you know, they want to make these changes. For example, they want to make sure that kinesiologists are included on every single insurance plan in the province of Ontario, or that, you know, kinesiologists get a giant raise from various employers, or, you know, you want kinesiology covered by something like OHIP, for example. Unfortunately, while some of these things are important and they do matter to the profession, these types of activities are left to the professional association, so they are not the role of counsel, and they fall under what we call the advocacy and the promotion piece. So again, just to further reiterate, everything the council does is in the public's interest. And Lynn, is there anything that you wanted to add on that? Um, not at this point, Ryan. I think you said it very well. Perfect. 
So what can you expect if you are elected to council? So council does meet uh, four times per year, and that basically works out to once every quarter. So there is a meeting in March. There's a two-day meeting in June. We also have a full-day meeting in September and then a full-day meeting in December. Uh, and we do provide you with those dates well in advance. So if, if you do decide to run and if in June your nomination is confirmed, we are going to provide you with a list of dates for the, uh, for the next year. And when you, if you are elected, you don't just serve on council. You are also appointed to at least two of our committees. So every college has a certain number of committees. There are seven or seven what's known as statutory committees. So those are committees that we need to have. And those committees include registration, quality assurance, inquiries, complaints and reports, which basically deals with all of the complaints that we receive. Uh, you've got the discipline committee. You've got the fitness to practice committee, uh, the patient relations committee and the executive committee. So those are the seven committees that we are required to have. We also have three other committees, I believe it is, that we are, that are not required by legislation, but that we have in place regardless. And those are the finance and planning committee and the examination appeals committee. So sorry, two non statutory committees. So if you are elected to council, expect to be appointed to at least two of those committees and you do have a choice. And important to note that while council meets four times per year, committees meet at least once a quarter and they do meet in what's called a panel or that's commonly known as a subgroup. So do be prepared for a few, um, for a few committee meetings as well. And so running for election, just a couple of common questions that we tend to get. Uh, every year without fail, kinesiologists sometimes say, you know, do we get to choose our district? And the short answer to that is no. Districts are determined by the college. And how we determine that is it is based on where you primarily work. So, for example, if most let's say you work in Toronto, Mississauga or Oakville, if a majority of your client base is in Toronto, you are automatically shuffled into district four. And now if you're not working, your district is determined uh, on where you live. But important thing to remember is you cannot choose that district is determined by the college based on your employment information. And one important thing to note as well, and this is sort of the one that always causes a bit of confusion during the nomination period. If you do want to run for council, there is a bit of a cooling off period. So you cannot have been on the board of, a, of directors uh, for a professional association for one year before. So essentially, basically, just sort of to summarize that and make it a little simpler, you have to wait for one year after you get off the board of, for example, the Ontario Kinesiology Association or CSEP or OATA before you uh, move on to our council. And we just allow for that cooling off period just so that you fully disentangle yourself from the business of that committee and then come on to our committee. And if you want to know a bit more about the eligibility criteria, it is available on our website, but most of it is pretty standard. So you either need to be living or working in the district in which you want to run. You can't be, uh, you must have paid all of your fees on time and you can't have any uh, orders or directives from any committee. Those disqualify you from running for council. And so a bit of background just on the nomination process. So the nomination period begins on May 1st and ends on May 25th. So essentially you have pretty much all of May to submit your nomination. On May 1st, you will be emailed your uh, nomination form and that's how you access the nomination ballot. Again, important to note with your nomination, you do need the support of two Arkins who are in your district. So again, if you're running in District 4, the people who are seconding your nomination must be from that same district. So mo most often to make it easier, people do tend to ask their colleagues for, um, for some support. And you must also complete a candidate statement, which explains uh, why you want to run. And this is about a 300 word statement that you just submit. And then there also just is a standard nomination form where you enter things like your name, you fill out a, a legal declaration, and you also just enter a bit of information about your employment history and your other, uh, and your other involvement. And so what happens after the nomination period? So once the nomination period ends on May 25th, the college will review your nomination and will confirm if you are eligible to run. Online voting runs from July 10th to July 17th, so we do keep it open for a week just to make sure that everyone has time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Again, voting, uh, you will be emailed a ballot, so you will receive your, uh, your ballot directly via email. And also important to note, because sometimes people get a little uh, get a little scared when they when they run for council. Don't worry, it's not you're elected and we, we don't really you know, we just invite you to that first meeting and nothing happens. We do work with you throughout the summer to make sure that you receive a package of orientation materials that basically lets you know what's going on council and what's expected of you. And that will be mailed to your uh, to your home. 
and also new for this year is we're planning a separate orientation day for all new council members and this is going to be held in august and we thought that it was important to get people on a separate day for orientation just so that they really can focus on learning the roles and expectations Traditionally, what we did is we did orientation on the very first day of our September meeting, which kind of made it hard for people to really grasp their role and then just jump into a business meeting. So that's why we sort of separated them. And if you do decide to run and if you are uh, elected, your first council meeting will be on September 10th of this year. And so now this is the part where I'm going to once again welcome Lynn. And so our, what we sort of envisioned with this webinar is we wanted to give you just a quick background on what it actually means to uh, to submit that nomination and what happens after. But we also wanted to have a discussion with someone who's actually been on council and can sort of share uh, her own perspective. Because as Lynn can tell you, there's nothing more boring than a college representative just speaking for an hour. So uh, we wanted to switch it up a bit. So I'm going to welcome Lynn again. And Lynn, why don't you just start by telling us a bit about your uh, maybe your background what it is you do, and why did you decide to get involved on council? Um, all right, so uh, yes, I am a registered kinesiologist. Um, I have been a kinesiologist or working in kinesiology since uh, 1995, so um, quite a while. Um, I did work in a clinical um, out service uh, or outpatient services for many years. Um, Eventually, over time, um, I became more involved with uh, continuing education and that sort of thing. And um, a good 13 years ago, I started teaching uh, at Laurentian University uh, in their human kinetics department and had uh, worked there for eight years. Um, at some point, I also started working over at Cambrian College in Sudbury in the uh, physical fitness management department. So um, now I'm a full-time professor at, in the college system. So I'm not um, teaching in a kinesiology specific degree anymore. Um, however, you know, some of my college students do articulate over into the uh, uh, the uh, human kinetics program over at Laurentian. So um, I'm still within the, the fitness side of kinesiology, um, recognizing that it's still a very wide breadth. Um, so that's that's what I'm doing right now. Um, why I got involved with the college at the time, um, my first foray into the college was actually on the exam committee. So I wasn't involved at originally with council um, on, on the larger perspective. I, I was involved with the exam committee because again, I was in continuing education. Mm -hmm. So there was a call out for volunteers to help create exam questions. So that seemed like a natural fit for me. <laughs> so um, I got involved with the, um, the exam committee. So setting the parameters of the exam along with the, the help of the consultant that we were working with and um, worked on the item writing committee for, uh, for a year uh, on that. And at the end of that year, um, there was a call out for nominations for the first um, formal um, uh, council going out. Um, at that uh, prior to that, the transitional council had been um, in place. Um, so seeing as uh, the Kinesiology Act was about to be proclaimed and they were looking for a a number of council members to, to sit on council. Um, so I, I did put my name forward and was lucky enough to, to be chosen to sit as the Northern representative on council. Once I was on council in that uh, exciting September council meeting <laughs> where that particular year, everybody was new, um, we had to sort ourselves out with a lot of help from the staff members, but we had to sort ourselves out into, um, you know, what roles we wanted to go into in, in terms of the different committees. Um, and one of those committees was, of course, the executive committee. So at that point within uh, the, the people that were sitting on council, um, I did run for president um, of the executive committee. And, and that's where I was for the next few years. <laughs> 
Yes, yeah, so that's that's a pretty that's a pretty accurate rundown. I remember I remember that all as you as you said it. Uh, and so you were on council for about three years. Now tell us a bit about so what can someone actually expect when they are elected to council? So maybe talk about things like the workload, which is often a common question that we get. Maybe you can tell us a bit about you know your actual prep, like what prep time looked like for you, you know, getting ready for a meeting, uh, the process of being on a committee, what that was like. Maybe some of those experiences. Okay, so as, as Ryan had already mentioned, um, you are expected to be on other committees um, other than council. So, you know, there's a, the four meetings per year um, with everybody together. Um, and then there's these smaller committee meetings. What you have to recognize is there is a lot of background information that you need to come into these meetings with. So that, that first year or that first kind of kick at the can with the stuff there is a, a fairly steep learning curve um, you have to expect that you are going to be reading documents um, you know well before you get to council um, this is not an overnight cram session um, and if you try to do that it's not going to go well <laughs> um, when we get on council so just negating the uh, the committees for a minute um, when we're in council we really need to maximize the time that we're there for. Um, and seeing as, you know, the council meetings are, you know, usually only one day, um, possibly two, depending on the time of year. Sometimes there is a lot of information that, or a lot of things we need to get done within that particular amount of time. Um, and it, it's absolutely fine to ask questions and, and, create discussion amongst um, issues that come up that need to be debated. Uh, but if you're going into the council meeting with not a clear picture of the background, um, and then you ask, start asking questions that are potentially in the reading material that we've been given, um, it does unfortunately start wasting time we start spinning our wheels a little bit um, which can be frustrating for those other people in the room who have put in the time to read um, now as we progress and, you know and once once you've gone through a number of these council meetings you get a lay of the land you kind of understand some of the background information that has already happened that reading becomes easier right because now you're not trying to ingest everything at once you're now just adding on um, to what you've already mm. kind of learned and discussed in previous council meetings. Um, so it, it does get a little bit better <laughs> going forward. Like I said, it, it's a steep learning curve that first first time. Um, in terms of the committees, that really is going to depend be dependent on what committees you're on, um, what role you play on those committees. Um, and how how active the committees are. Um, so, for example, um, I was on the um, ICRC or the Inquiries, Complaints, and uh, Reports Committee uh, for one of the years that um, I was on council. And the two years prior to that, there hadn't been any complaints. But in the year that I was on it, we ended up having to hear through in quite a bit of detail to, to uh, complaints. Uh, so that committee hadn't had a lot of work that needed to be done in the past. They had just been working, like doing some um, kind of background policy work, but they didn't have to really deal with the meat and potatoes of a, a complaint prior to that third year. And in that third year, well, now we've got some complaints that we have to, to get through. Um, and in that case, what, what happened with that is um, instead of having a regular meeting, because we complaints, for example, are, are time sensitive, um, we were given the reading materials beforehand. Um, you, you spend a, an hour or two going over the reading material, and then we, we had a, a phone meeting. So um, that wasn't necessarily that we had to you know, travel to Toronto to to have our meeting. We were able to do that um, in uh, virtual virtual uh, committee meeting in that case. Mm. 
Ryan, I'm feeling like I'm just rambling now. No, no, you, you covered it off well. Uh, you covered it off well. And, that you know, you made a good point. That's often, and this sort of ties into my next question for you. You know, we do get a lot of questions about the, you know, how often do committees meet? It really does depend because a lot of it is on a case-by-case -case basis. And the more we mature, the more that, you know, the reality is we do get more cases. So, for example, our complaints are not huge, but they are going up. Uh, for example, the registration committee is considering more files just because now we have more members. Same thing with the quality assurance committee. They're also considering more files because more members are now going through the peer and practice assessment. So it's always a hard question to answer, but you really can sort of hope on at least one meeting per quarter. And right. all of that segued really, yeah, sorry, go ahead, Lynn. Actually, I did, yeah, sorry, and I just remembered something about the committees. So, um, in terms of your choices of the committee, so what happens in that, that first September council meeting? Um, well, at least it, it did that first year. I think, I think now it happens in, in August. Um, as council members, we are allowed to or able to put forward the committees that we would most like to be a part of. So, you know, there's, there's seven standing committees, like uh, Ryan mentioned, um, that we're mandated to have. Uh, and I can put forward that I'm really most interested in, say, registration, quality assurance, and fitness to practice, for example. What would happen then is, of those three committees, the executive committee takes all this information from all of the, the council members that have put their names forward, and they try to distribute them as amicably as possible, right? So they, they're trying to get the the committees that you are most interested in, first of all, and, and getting you into that, but also looking for a good balance um, to make sure that, um, you know, if you, you have somebody, um, say, with an education background, like, like I was, looking at quality assurance makes sense um, because we're looking at making sure that our kinesiologists have, have the you know, the, uh, the quality out there in the community. Mm -hmm. um, you know, whereas we have, um, or, you know, if somebody has a finance background, is one of the public members has a finance background, well, it makes perfect sense to be, for them to be sitting on the planning and finance committee, yeah. right? So, so we do look at that. We do take that into account. Um, I know as president, I ended up having to say, oh, well, I guess, I need to fill that hole over here. I'll go on that committee. <laughs> Hence why I was on ICRC at that very third year. Um, but, you know, we try our very best to take your interests into account yeah. and your strengths into account before you're put into these various committees. And that's and actually that's a bit of a perfect subway, uh, sorry segue. So my next question to you was, and this is a common question that we get all the time. And again, like I said, it's hard to say, but you can't expect four meetings per year with council and then one committee meeting every quarter. But how did you find the time commitment? I know for you, you had a you had sort of a unique circumstance where you would come in from the north. So maybe tell us a little bit about how you found the time commitment. Yeah, um, I mean, I found I found it challenging at times. Absolutely, um, I did have to to travel. Um, tra like I could not travel in for the day, um, per se. Um, it just didn't quite work that way um, with, with the uh, number of hours of driving it would have been, and flights weren't going to work that way. Um, but I know that many of the council members did that. There's a few, again, outlying areas like um, Win Windsor and Ottawa, um, Kingston, where, you know, again, the, ch the distance is hard to, to come in for a day. For the council meetings themselves, it's really important that you come in, though. Um, it's really difficult to have um, council meetings where all of us are at the table um, with you know, a third of us on the phone. <laughs> so, so that is a little bit challenging. So really because um, the, the office staff are so good about planning these in advance, they do give you more than ample warning as to when these council meetings um, occur. Um, you know, it, it is sometimes a little bit of a, a juggle if there is, you know, something unexpected that comes up. Uh, but if you have a job where you can, 
you know, generally say, well, I'm going to have to, to be working nine to five on those five days. Um, can I take that day off in order to, to go down for the meeting? Um, it is, it's reasonable to do, and it's, it's really strongly important that you, you do um, be there in, in person if at all possible. Um, in terms of uh, otherwise traveling, um, I know a number of, of uh, people on council did commute into the city for the day. Um, with the office being downtown, it's at a really nice central location, um, but traffic. I remember people talking about traffic was sometimes. Well, that's issue. always the thing even when there's not a council. Yeah, but that, I was going to say, but it's a GTA, so you expect that, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, and, you know, that's also a good point. It's, it kind of ties into another point that I haven't really mentioned, but uh, do you remember you are paid for your time, for the time that you, that you, uh, that you spend in a council or a committee meeting? And we also do reimburse all of your uh, travel and, expenses related to traveling and we do provide you a bit of direction on on all of that so taking it a bit away now from the logistical side of things uh lynn what's sort of your uh, key takeaway or learning from being on council um that there is a lot more going on behind the scenes and behind the decisions that are being made um that, than you realize far far more um I, I mean, I think my eyes have been opened uh, very much so in terms of all of the work that goes into developing all of the policies um, that are in play. Um, for example, if, if we were to uh, go into a council meeting and uh, we had to discuss a new policy going forward, uh, it, it wasn't that the council members were necessarily the ones that were digging up the information on, on these policies. Um, our very capable staff was, was doing that for us and giving us all of that background information. Um, but they would come, uh, they would do all the, the research for us, come to a couple of, of options that they thought were be best practice, best um, uh, or most reasonable, and then bring it to us uh, in council to, um, you know, debate on it or discuss it further, ask questions, um, which a lot of times the staff were able to answer those questions right away. But in other cases, you know, if we say, well, why did you expect us to want to do this? Or why did you think that this was the best practice when um, you know we've had a different experience um, and sometimes those questions you know the the staff members would say we're not really sure but we can look into that further and so so the discussion that we would have, have at council um, maybe a decision wasn't made at that moment um, and the discussion was tabled to the following meeting but it would give time for the uh, the staff to go back and look at it further um, or the council members to dig into it further if if they had more questions about it um, and there's so much about um, the legislation that is is really sometimes very difficult to to fathom because it's a lot deeper than i think i expected um, the other takeaway that i got from being on council is how serious the role is that we play on council. I know that Ryan mentioned it at the beginning very clearly and it did a good job with it, uh, was saying that um, once we're elected to council, we are no longer, um, you know, uh, su not supporting, but uh, we're, we're no longer, you know, working for the electorate. So the people that elected us into that position, we're no longer, um, you know, backing them. We are there for the public. And that is, I think, the, the hardest thing for any kinesiologist going on this board to remember. Um, not just to learn, but to remember every time you're on council that this is not about kinesiology and uh, prom the promotion of kinesiology. This is about protecting the public from kinesiologists like us and making sure that we're not doing anything wrong. 
and the seriousness of our role on council for that um, can't be understated. And like I said, as as kins that are on the council, we sometimes have to be reminded um, that we're you know we're starting to cross the line into advocacy. Um, part part of the reason why part of the reason one of the main reasons why we have public members on the board who do a fabulous job as well. Um, those public members that are not kinesiologists are on the board to keep us in check and make sure that we don't go into the advocacy side of things. Um, so that is, it, it's a big learning with that. It, it's a big takeaway and it's, it's sometimes very hard for people to swallow, um, especially um, if I can be stereotyped with the kin and the fitness side of things, we're like, yeah, rah, rah, kin. We can't do that anymore because it's raw protection of the public from kin and making sure that we're doing things in the right way. Yeah, and, that, and that's a good point too. And remember that that whole dilemma between you know promoting versus protection, it's it's not unique to our profession. Every single profession out there and their counsel struggle with this. So you know, don't worry. We're Lynn can attest to this. We're pretty supportive, and you know, as staff mm -hmm. and you know, our registrar and our chair, they try very hard to make sure that that discussion always falls back to the public. But that is more emphasis that we've placed in our training is that we really want you to make sure that you understand that when you come here, all of those decisions at the end of the day are made in the public interest. But and another interesting point that you made, almost every single person who has been on council, they have said the same thing. They don't realize sort of the seriousness of the role or even the role of the regulator. So that always tends to be the, mm -hmm. um, the big takeaway. So thank you for that. And so do you have any suggestions or maybe tips, something that you think that you could, uh, you know, offer to maybe some of these people who are on this webinar or others who are perhaps considering running? Um, I think I think if you're debating it um, and you're you're being hesitant because you're worried about the time commitment, uh, you might want to see about getting your feet wet with some of the um, the committees that are available to those that aren't on council. So there, there's a number of, of committees, um, like, the, like the exam committee, for example, or the item writing committee, uh, where they do look for people um, to help in that capacity. And I think, Ryan, I saw that the uh, peer and practice assessors group is looking for some people right yeah. now. Uh, not right now, but we were. We were looking for a period. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So might be something on the website. I saw that. <laughs> <laughs> um, but get but getting involved. Um, and if you if you get involved um, sort of on the um, more the ad hoc committees or the the smaller committees, you get a, a feeling of what it's like to be working within um, you know this framework. Um, again, it's it can be very different from, you know, maybe working in a, a, um, an advocacy association. Um, so you get a, a chance to work with some of the people that you would work with at the college as well in terms of the staff members, and it would give you a little bit um, different feel. Um, otherwise, though, if if you're thinking, well, you know what, I can I can do the time commitment, you know, I can I can set aside a, a day for some reading in the first year, and then it, I know it's going to be easier from that. Um, and my work has the flexibility that I can um, go to these council meetings, at, you know, in person at least four times a year. Um, then I would say try it, like, and, and but try it, like you commit to it for the that three year period. But jump in. Um, the staff that are at the office are there to support you. Um, they will help you along the way. And if you have questions or if you're feeling like you're not quite, you know, getting it or you're getting overwhelmed, um, there are all of the other people on council as well as our staff members there to support you in this. The best way to learn is by doing. And I don't think that just by reading the policies on, on the side or from the website, you're going to get a really good picture of what is really going on um, in these discussions. The best way to do it is, is to try it out um, and, and commit to it for that, that period of time. You will learn so much. Um, you'll 
you know, you're still networking with uh, other colleagues, but also other um, public members uh, who have the same passion for making sure that the uh, the public is being protected as you do. And uh, again, your your eyes are are open to a wider perspective of what's going on in the regulatory world. Good. So I'll kind of, now this is sort of the last question that I have for you. And like I said, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them into the chat bar and either I can answer them or even Lynn can answer them if she's open to that. So feel free to enter some of those because we do have a bit of time. So kind of circling it back to the first question when I asked you, why do you want to get involved? So taking it back now, did it, did it meet your expectations? Did you maybe get what you wanted out of it? How, how was it when, you know, reflecting back, did it, was it worth it, so to speak? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. No, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I won't, again, uh, say that it wasn't, you know, some hard work sometimes and some days where, you know, I maybe don't want to read that, but I have to, and that's fine. <laughs> Recognizing as a president, sometimes you have to read a little bit more. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it was a, it was a wonderful experience. Um, you know, the, um, the exposure again to different perspectives, um, seeing things in a, a different light than maybe you would um, see as a practitioner um, and understanding the background that's going into that gives you a, um, a better pr perspective when you're back on the, um, the, the clinical side or the practical side of things. Um, you might be a little bit more tolerant when, you know, you see things coming out, or you might, um, you know, when when things are put out on the on the website and um, the the college is asking for your feedback, um, you might recognize how important it is for them to get that feedback from you um, working in the field, um, as opposed to you know just like oh well I'll just let somebody else <laughs> answer that that survey. Um, so yeah, it was it was very much worth it. Um, it was it was also like i said you know uh, you know great to network with with other people um in the profession um across the province um and uh, other people that want kinesiology to you know be the the regulated healthcare profession that we know we can be um and recognize that we need to take steps to get there so yeah it was definitely worth it that's always good to hear. <laughs> so the, those are all the questions. That, so that really does bring us to the end. So there was, uh, hopefully you got a bit of a better overview on what it actually means to run for council. Um, and hopefully that was a bit of helpful information. Hopefully some of Lynn's insights were also helpful to you as well. So like I said, I'll give you a couple of minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot them into the uh, chat box and we can we can answer them. We will patiently wait. <laughs> I feel like we need to have the Jeopardy um, music in the background. I've done that at other conferences before that I've hosted. <laughs> it's almost expected these days now. <laughs> <laughs> and if you're a little too shy to perhaps um, ask your questions here, feel free to also email me. Uh, my email is available up on the website. I'd be more than happy to answer some of your questions after, uh, after this session for tomorrow. Yeah, and, and uh, Ryan and I had spoken about this uh, yesterday, so if you have any questions that you think would be more specific that, uh, that I could answer, um, absolutely, you can, you can uh, send them to Ryan and Ryan can contact me um, and I'll be able to contact you back with uh, any answers that I can give, um, if nothing comes up in the chat box right now. <laughs> So I am not seeing anything coming up. So, uh, and we do have a nice small number of attendees, which is great. So uh, again, I just want to thank everyone so much for taking some time this evening for, uh, uh, for to attend the webinar. We do hope that you found it helpful. Again, if you have any questions that maybe, uh, maybe you're thinking about this and you're not going to sleep tonight because you're so excited about potentially running for council, feel free to send me that email and, uh, I can answer some of those questions uh, for you. And a huge thanks to Lynn. I know that as you heard there, she is a busy lady. So thank you so much for taking some time out of your busy okay. schedule to, uh, to chat with us tonight. We really appreciate it. So 
Thanks, everyone. We'll see you soon. Thank you. I hope some of you put your names forward. <laughs> Thanks, Bye. Len. Good night, everyone.